programming is just talking and the main reason that people don't know how to code or to program is because they don't know how to speak basically but let me explain what i mean by that in this video we are going to understand how we can program and for that we need to understand what is programming well programming is basically when you formalize solution for a problem so when you create an structure that everyone will understand and will be able to follow and for that we create some conventions in which everyone can agree to follow both who is giving the instructions and the person who is following the instructions or in the case of programming the computer who uh, which is following the, the instructions fundamentally programming is about formalizing solutions to problems through algorithms where computers automate these solutions and this is the most important part and what creates the most the most efficient thing that makes programming so valuable is because when you can automate the solutions for the problems that you are trying to solve the computer can run it on everywhere like every computer will follow the same protocol the same rules that you agreed to follow when you are, were creating the the solution for the problem and they will all test this solution extensively and since computers follow a rule they are quite dumb but they are very obedient so we gave them an instruct uh, an instruction and they will follow it to every line if something is not working it's probably because either we didn't make it uh clear or someone else in the process of <laughs> Uh, compiling your code to the computer mess something up but well let's understand what what how this all happens right so we need to understand that when we are programming we are basically arguing with a computer and for that we sh should follow the basic structures of any language so we have some rules which give the language some structure which is the what we call grammar and based on this grammar we need to create a vocabulary to communicate with the computer because again computers don't know what anything means so you need to teach them in order for them to validate your argument so this is the most important part when you are creating an algorithm when we are coding you need to create your vocabulary or you can rely on someone else's libraries so coding libraries programming libraries to build up on their vocabulary as well so this is how we create the solutions for any kind of problem we can create our own vocabulary and teach the computer what we mean by anything that we are using in the solution that on the instructions that we are giving to it or we and and or we can rely on someone else's uh, vocabulary so it's known as programming library so that the the solutions are already validated through the computer and the computer will understand them so uh, a language is basically that when you have rules through grammar and you have and you build up some vocabulary on top of these rules so you can communicate better and get more accurate with what you are thinking because language is basically a formalized way to express your thoughts and this is exactly what programming is a formalized is a formalized way to express your thoughts so when you, we agree upon a language we should follow some syntax which is this grammar which is these rules so that we can communicate and build up on them to create our own language our own vocabulary and this is what programming is you structure this these rules through syntax so every programming language has a syntax and then you can build up semantics through this syntax typically this language already come out with four basic types and two basic data types data structures actually so we have four data types and two basic structures integer numbers are anything that is integer right so we have one two three four five and minus one minus two minus three minus five these are all integer numbers they are not fractions real numbers are anything in between these integer numbers so 1.5 0.5 8.7 minus 3.14 which basically spy on top of that and this is one of the most important types to uh to master we have strings which are basically character 
um, a sequence of characters. We, we can put uh, typically, uh, conventionally, so this is a convention of language. We put these characters, this chain of characters, uh, inside quote marks. So we can put a, a word, a, a complete phrase, and note that the, the more complex is your string, the harder it will be to deal with, with, with it later on. And also, we can use numbers inside these uh, quote marks, but note that when we do so, they, are, they won't be considered numbers anymore. We can't perform the same operations as we did with uh, integer numbers and real numbers on them. They are, not, they are now uh, a chain of characters. They are now strings. So this causes a lot of issues because Strings are a very, a very, very powerful data type, but they can cause a lot of headaches because they are very flexible, or they can really, really help you build this vocabulary and help the computer understand all your words and the meaning of what you are coding. You should pay a lot of attention to your strings because they can call, they can cause a lot of errors, but they can also build up uh, some very reliable uh, code bases. And the fourth data type that we typically work with, these are the pri primitive types, uh, are value, uh, truth values. So we have true or false, which we typically call Boolean values. And on top of that, we have two data structures, which are arrays. So arrays are lists of characters. Well, a list is different from an array, but typically, especially on dynamic type it, programming language, we are not going into that now, but typically into, uh, they, they have what we call lists. The, the main difference between an array and a list is that a list, you can, you, you don't have a limited number of elements, of items inside the, the list. You can keep up adding new items to the list. While an array, you should, typically you need to dictate what is the size of this array. So if you say like, this array is built up of seven elements, you need to either come out with a new way to extend this array, or you should limit yourself to six items in this array. Arrays are typically also typed, so they will also follow the types that we are working with. So if you are using a an array of integers, you can only add uh, integers on them. Well, as I said, some dynamic type it language will allow you to mix some types inside an array, but I personally wouldn't recommend you to do so because if you try to make an operation inside an array that has mixed data types, you will have a lot of headaches. You will have a bad time with that. So this is an array of integer numbers. This is an array of uh, float numbers or real numbers. This is an array of strings and something interesting. Well, someone that is on computer science or something like that can correct me if I'm wrong, but strings, a chain of characters or string of characters are somehow arrays as well. But I'm not going into the technical details here, but you can create arrays of um, strings as well, and you can create arrays of booleans as well. Uh, the next data type, and to me this is the most important one to master, uh, the, the data structure, is dictionaries. Well, what is the difference between an array and a dictionary? Think about it in real life, so as if we, uh, you were working with a list and a dictionary uh, in, in the real life. Well. On a list, you will look for elements on the based on the index, right? So you look for the third element, for the fourth element, for the first element, and this is how you look for. This is how you typically find what you're looking for inside a list. On a on a dictionary, on the other hand, you look for the meaning of a word, right? You look for the value of a word, and this is exactly how we we build dictionaries. So instead of using like elements like this, uh, um, uh, split it by a, a comma, you would have a key followed by a, a value. So like this, you can say an apple, this is a string array, you can say 
unstring dictionary so you can say apple and followed by red which is also a string and then grape followed by green which is also a string on most um, programming languages what you have here is that the the, the key is an string and the value can be anything so the value can be a boolean can be a another string can be a real number an integer or something like that or even another dictionary this is very common as well some other languages such as JDScript and Lua if I'm not mistaken they accept any data type as the key as well so you can say for instance one here which will be red and two which will be uh, green and you can perform some operations on that as well so this helps a lot problems are not solved just by declaring the data types of what you're trying to, to approach right when you are formalizing the instructions to solve a given problem you will have some values that will vary and some values that will be constant through the whole solution of the problem and i note that this is a very important thing to to make it clear as I just said, for the whole extension of the solution of the problem solution. So this is what we call abstraction. For any problem that you are trying to solve, you should only observe the what is relevant for the problem. So for instance, we know that there are a multitude of um, colors for like apples, right? An apple can be green, they can be kind of like rippling, turning into red they can be like yellow so but let's say that for the sake of our program for the sake of the game that we are making apples will always be red it doesn't matter if uh, someone else want a different color for an apple for the sake of what we are building our apples will always be red so red would be a constant in this mean in, in this context so, for instance, if you are dealing with, let's say, physics problems, a constant will be something like the light speed, right? So the light speed is always a constant. And, well, the, the object speed, the rel relative speed of the object will be a variable because it can vary depending on who is observing it, right? Another example would be the size, uh, the radius of a circle while pi will always be a constant. So pi will be a constant while the radius of the circle and the circumfer circumference will vary, right? Based on that, we create some instructions, a sequence of instructions that, that, that will give them a name. And to that, we call a procedure. Note that, please guys. <laughs> I'm taking a philosophy of language approach here. A procedure in that sense is when you have a sequence or even like one single instruction that you want to give it a name so you create your vocabulary like is almost as if you are giving a the the meaning of a verb an, an action so let's say walk forward walk backward uh, walk to the left walk to the to the right so this will be procedures so a procedure will basically you giving a name to the instructions that that, that you just code that you just program and you do that because this will become a a word in your vocabulary that you can reuse when you are telling the computer uh, the instructions for another problem a more complex problem typically what people say here is that oh you do that because you don't want to repeat yourself but this is not the thing this is not what procedures are about you can repeat yourself it is the instructions that you are making the, the meaning of them have another context so you will give them another name so for instance let's say that we have something like move forward so we have some variables we have something like some instructions like the position of this character will increase in uh, three pixels per second oh, towards the left but let's say that we have the same thing uh, the position of the object will move three pixels to the left but this is not a walking algorithm this is this is not meant for walking let's say this is meant for moving interface interfaces don't walk so you should give another name even though the instruction is the same this is because later on if you need to modify the meaning of this instruction if you need to change something or if you need to add something or if you, if you need to extend it 
you know that these things are, are these are two different things. So move forward and move interface to the left are two different procedures, even though they they the meaning the instructions are the same. This will help you not repeat yourself. This will help you make sense of yourself. So these are what procedures are all about. So this is the, the basics of programming. Uh, on the next video, we are going to talk about object oriented uh, programming, which is basically when we add up a new data type, a new, yeah, a new data structure, which is called classes. So just like we have arrays and dictionaries, we will now have classes, which are basically when you unite uh, properties, so variables and constants, together with procedures. Uh, in, in, when you bundle them together into a single data structure. But for this video, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if you have any doubts, if you have any questions. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe on the channel because we will have a complete series about programming from the start, which is this very video that you just watched, to uh, advanced design patterns, solutions for common problems. Right? So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also to follow me on Coffee because the files that we are going to use for the projects in this video series will be available for members there on Coffee. That's it. So thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and see you in the next one. Bye bye.